my god, just look at those colors. Isn't this one amazing little insect? Currently you are looking at a species of tiger moth named the Arachnis aulea or the Aulian tiger moth. This species is found in the southern United States of America, such as New Mexico and Arizona, but also in the country Mexico and Guatemala. The most interesting story of all is how I managed to raise these little beauties. Because this species behaves a little bit more uniquely than your regular and average caterpillar. But for that we need to go back in time. This story begins with hairy caterpillars. Don't be fooled by their fuzzy appearance. I did find their hairs to be quite sharp, like splinters. Thankfully the caterpillars don't seem to be venomous, but the hairs do stick to your skin like splinters and are painful. These caterpillars were mostly peacefully feeding on sweet gum or liquid umber, using the scientific name. Good news everyone, my uh, Arachnis aulea have clearly begun to uh, overwinter. So uh, to me this is quite good news. So how do I know this you ask? Well let me demonstrate to you. Because actually the caterpillars have told me themselves that they are ready to overwinter. It sounds a bit crazy but it's absolutely true. Let's have a look. What we see here appears to be a completely empty cage but it's definitely anything but empty I see I put these paper kitchen towels here in the container and as you can see they are not empty they are full now why is that you ask these are actually full of caterpillars I don't know if it's possible to show you maybe if I shine a light inside but Caterpillars that want to overwinter actually seek sh actively seek shelter into these uh, into these kitchen rolls. And here, just for comparison, this one is completely empty. Can you see it? We can look through this one, but not through this one. Can you see? And for some interesting reason. All of them have decided to overwinter within the same paper towel, paper roll. I don't know why, it's probably a communal group thing. Maybe now if I directly shine some light into it, you can see what I'm talking about. See those hairy things there? Those are the caterpillars. See? This, this, this kitchen roll, empty cardboard roll. It's actually full, filled with caterpillars. Can you see it? Yes. And that's because they are hibernating. The hibernating caterpillars of Arachnus aulia, they like to hide. And they just completely stop eating. And they will, they will continue doing this until they believe spring has come. Now, <coughs> it's really interesting that all of them are in this roll and this one's completely empty. Can you see it? That's so strange because I put both of these things in the, in the container and they all choose one. I also have a smaller one that's completely empty. Uh, I don't know why this is. This is quite interesting. So it's uh, definitely time to put them in their winter enclosure, I guess, because these guys want to be kept cold during winter. Just for the sake of comparison, empty kitchen roll weighs 10 grams, okay? Can you see it? Nine, <coughs> nine to 10 grams. So let's take the one full of caterpillars. It's 74 grams so that means there's like there's like 60 grams of caterpillars inside this 
So it's, this is completely full of sleeping caterpillars. Here we actually have one sleeping hibernating caterpillar. Uh, I don't know why it's alone and not in the cardboard roll like the rest. I found it in the corner of the cage. For some reason it's, it's not with its friends. Maybe I should put it in here. So it can sleep with the others. Oops. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to give them a towel. Yes, a towel. This will keep them a little bit warm and sheltered from the worst cold and the, especially the dry air. So I put this towel here inside. Now I take the roll with sleeping caterpillars. And I just slightly hide it here in this towel, okay? It's going to keep them comfortable and warm. And if they want, they can still crawl out of it. It's just a little bit protection. Next I'm going to give them some food, which is laurel cherry, Prunus laurocerasis. Now hibernating caterpillars actually don't need food, because they will spend the winter uh, sleeping dormantly. And only next spring they will crawl out when it becomes warm and start eating again, or pupate. But um, I'm still putting it in because it's possible for the caterpillars to wake up on some warm days and eat a little bit and then go back to sleep. It sounds strange, but sometimes it happens. It's just in case I'm not there to check it. Some of them need food, then they have it. Uh, they will probably not eat it, but it's just a nice thought to, to think of the fact that they have food when they need it. If you overwinter them, probably, however, they don't really need to eat. So, if you do it right. So it's just an emergency food. Okay, so now we are in my my spooky basement. Yes, very scary, I know. This is where I'm going to hibernate the caterpillars, because here it's actually very cold. This is, uh, I mean, there is a heater, but it doesn't do much. I think it's about, um, I don't know, on average during the day, it's about five to six degrees Celsius here. At night, maybe even cool, cooler, four degrees. It is a frost-free space, which is very important. These guys don't like to be freezing all the time. They just want to be cold. That tells them it's winter. And when it's becoming warm again, they will wake up from their hibernation. This will be in about three months time. So I hope that works out really. Nice hibernation spot. So here's the towel. And here we have the kitchen roll full of sleeping caterpillars. Shh, don't wake them up. Good night. See you in about three to four months. I'll do some health checkups regularly. So. And next I'm just going to leave them alone for several months. There's nothing I can do. They're hibernating. There's nothing I can do except keep them cold because they really need the temperatures to tell them, hey guys, it's still winter. And only after they have been convinced that winter has passed, they will wake up again. So if you keep them warm, it's possible that they will keep hibernating indefinitely until they die. Because they don't sense any winter, so they will just keep sleeping. So it's, it's only after, literally, after they've been cold for a long time, that they will wake up again from hibernation. So it's necessary to tell them this, to let them experience the cold, if you understand what I mean. Bye bye guys. Now let's recap what happened here. All the caterpillars disappeared from their cage and decided to live in this toilet roll. It's really interesting to mention all of them were in the same toilet roll while the other one was empty. I guess the caterpillars signaled to each other that they were uh, going into hiding and then formed groups. This is when they start to overwinter. I took the cage full of caterpillars down to my basement where they would spend over six months time in cold condition cold conditions excuse me this video makes it uh, look very short but filming this species took me about a full year crazy isn't it anyways tiger moths commonly hibernate as caterpillars including this species 
My basement I is a good place this for video six months because long, it's gold. But let's skip time from November 2090 to March 2020. Skip time, skip, skip time once again. I took the caterpillars out of my basement to room temperature. See how these guys are doing. This is exciting because for the first time in six months, these guys are experiencing room temperature. Now, let's see. The uh, thermometer still reads 13 degrees Celsius, but this will go up fast because I just took them out of my cold basement. And uh, I left them alone for like six months. Oh wow, look at that. Okay, so judging by the contents of this cage, the caterpillars are definitely alive and moving, as you can see. And they haven't eaten for six months, and that's incredible. I wonder how they do that. You know, caterpillars, they need a lot of food. Uh, some of the big moths that I breed, the caterpillars can starve in, two, in three to four days if you don't feed them. So how these guys survive for six months without food is beyond me. Obviously the cool temperatures, they play an important role. Since it slow down their metabolism. But still I think that's a pretty much an amazing feat. Let's see, in the, in the, there are still many of them in the, in the paper towel, I can tell. Still many of them are in here. But some of them have crawled out. And let's see if there's any dead ones. Sometimes you just have caterpillars that will die. Uh, it sucks, but it's also normal. Overwintering is really tough for such a small insect and uh, not eating for so long. And uh, only the strong ones usually survive. But uh, so far I only see healthy individuals, so... That could be a great sign, to be honest. I wonder what will happen next. Are they going to pupate now? Hmm. Wow, very interesting. So now according to my butterfly and moth books, these guys should pupate as soon as they are warm, warmed up in spring. Uh, they're not going to start eating after hibernation. They just, they hibernate when they are almost ready to pupate. And after hibernation, they do it. Ow, their hairs are sharp. So that's very interesting. Also, I don't know if you can see it. But in here, there's many caterpillars. Can you see it? They, most of them uh, overwintered inside this little cave here of cardboard and didn't move for six months. But some caterpillars obviously are still moving around in the container. I guess those are waking up. This is hard to film because they're really inside this. See? It's crazy to me how since last September these caterpillars haven't eaten. And currently it is May. Like that's... To think about it, it's insane. They're like six or seven months without food right now. And they're still moving and alive. That's crazy, guys. That's crazy. Hope they pupate soon. Because I don't think these guys can last forever. Now, here is something that I find personally pretty incredible. Caterpillars are in here. Still hibernating. And they have not eaten anything since October. It is currently June. So that means October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. June. What the heck? They haven't eaten anything for 
nine months and are still alive. What is this sorcery? I've actually just removed the towel from their cage and spread it open. And I'm telling you, this is some form of black magic. Seriously. As you can see, the caterpillars are sitting still almost completely. But if we examine them here, they are still moving. This one has curled itself up in the defense. But they're, st they're still... See, here's one starting to move. Can you see it? And it's incredible. And these guys have not eaten anything, anything since last year, October. And it is June, June. And if this keeps up, <laughs> they uh, may as well go a full year without eating. I mean, it's nine months. It's been nine months. So in three months time, it will be a year without food for these guys. And they're still alive. I've seen a lot in my career, but this is extreme. This is extreme. I'm telling you, this is some voodoo going on. Wow. And this is not all. The rest is here on the underside of the uh, towel. Can you see it? Here's more. Here's my beautiful muscular leg but um, it's insane this is insane wow here look here's more of them all still alive wow and I, I just hope that soon these guys will will change their mind and really form a pupa because uh, you know <laughs> I'm getting tired of waiting and um, I want them to pupate soon. This is insane, this is crazy. Now what is truly crazy is that these caterpillars can go for over 8 months without eating. Even after bringing them from my basement in November, where they have overwintered until March. But even after bringing them out to room temperature in March, it took until July for them to pupate. In total, these caterpillars spent about 8 to 9 months without food. That's completely bizarre to me. So how did they do it? Well, I don't know the details, but I do know some species of tiger moths have a magic trick rooted in chemistry. You see a lot of tiger moths survive the winter by having an antifreeze compound in their hemolymph. It's called glycerol. Glycerol is a sugar alcohol that acts as an antifreeze agent that prevents the caterpillars from freezing over in winter. But what's even more curious is that after overwintering, the caterpillars can use it as an energy source. Which means that even after overwintering, they don't have to feed if they can use the glycerol. It's really quite amazing to see caterpillars go without food for 8 months straight. Making this video cost an enormous amount of patience. I eventually even had to water the caterpillars because they dry out over time and do require some hydration in order to maintain their dormancy and not dry out completely. So sometimes what I will do is this. Until finally, there was finally the first pupa. And then, after I found the first pupa, every day, I had a harvest of more pupa. All the caterpillars were massively pupating after each other and I was collecting the fresh pupa every day. Finally, if we waited a little bit longer, we can see the moths. 
Here they come. The moths are finally hatching after almost a year of filming them. Don't say that I don't do any effort for YouTube. This was about nine months. Tiger moths are some of the most beautiful and underrated creatures on our planet, as you can see. Their color patterns and ecology is simply just amazing. This species only has one brood per year, it seems. When the adults eclose from their pupa, they pair and then the larvae feed until they are mature, and after which they go dormant in the final instar and hibernate for almost a year, only to pupate and become moths shortly before their flight season, the consecutive summer. This species has an amazing thread pose in which they lift their wings up and show their yellow abdomens and the red underside of their wings to advertise their potential unpalatability and scare away predators. These moths live for a very short time unfortunately, just a week or two before they run out of energy and die. In that short time they mate and die. This species is not very difficult to breed. The hardest thing is the excruciatingly long larval hibernation plus the estivation. If you passed all of this, then you are more or less golden. What I also loved about your adults is their variability. Each of these moths has a totally uh, unique appearance that uh, varies per individual moth. And it's great to see all of them in close and search for the differences between them. Pairing can be done in a small cage in a warm and ventilated spot. I choose to do it outdoors in a warm summer night. The genus Arachnis, in my opinion, are among the most beautiful and colorful tiger moths. This was the first species from the genus Arachnis I have bred in captivity, because these can be a little bit difficult to get in captivity, but in the future it would be amazing if I got to raise and study more of their cousins in captivity, since there are multiple species in the genus Arachnis with amazing colors and shapes. I would love to breed more species and film them. The males are smaller than the females. Here you can see a male and here you can see a female. Males are more slender, smaller and have a shorter wingspan. And after a while, the females will begin to lay numerous eggs on the walls of their cages. This species loves to feed on sweet gum or liquid amber, trifolium or clover, rumex, uh, rubus or bramble, taxaricum or dandelion, and the caterpillars can be raised on a very wide selection of plants. Eventually many of them started to eclose and then weeks later they died. And that's really the end of the show. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found it entertaining to see me raise this beautiful moth. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider donating to me or becoming my patron. My channel is 100% demonetized by YouTube and my videos are expensive and time consuming. This is a short video, but it took me almost a full year to produce this video. It sounds crazy, but it's true. This is very hard as a demonetized content creator who doesn't earn anything from his uploads. It's my donations from my fans and viewers who are able to uh, allow me to keep going. Thank you and bye bye.